Okay then, first port of call, we're gonna, gonna go and speak to the burly man, and then we'll go and speak to Everett. To tell him that we've opened the door for him. And then, what are we doing then? We're gonna find a back entrance into that place. Who's this though? Hmm. A sturdy woman. Do you think this could be the woman who bought the gun? Point out the book, a good one. Maybe not. Who are you? No one. I'm just a working class woman. She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. Tough, what are you doing? Looking for something to read. <laughs> she reverts her attention to a worn out paperback. Phenomenal. It is. I'm a policeman. I know you are. <laughs> Do you need the help of a policeman? <laughs> she tries hard to focus on the book stand. This citizen thinks she can do without your assistance. Don't buy it. They all need help. <laughs> help her by carrying things? Or maybe she needs a weightlifter. Maybe she needs you to fight her husband. I want to watch her like a creeper. Her hands, move over the, her hands move over the book covers. The tips of her fingers look rough, stained with yellow. Seems like she's spent a lot of time at work smoking. Maybe your husband is missing. <laughs> My husband? No, he's not. So where could he be? I don't know. At home now? I'll drink with the friends working? Where is this going, officer? So what I'm hearing is you don't really know where your husband is. <laughs> yes, but she looks around and takes a deep breath, a little annoyed. I don't really need to know where my husband is, not all the time. Wouldn't you like to? No, she looks you straight in the eye. Her foot is tapping nervously. Maybe you're right. I can totally help you find your missing husband. Why are we still talking about this? I haven't lost my husband. This is hilarious. She has though. The husband is totally lost. You should tell her that it's okay. Hush, baby. <laughs> what? It's all right to not know where your husband is. Nothing shameful in that. Who said anything about shame? Stop talking down to me. She puts her foot down. My husband is not missing. But he is. You can feel it. Or maybe it's something else then. Maybe your cockatoo is missing. I don't mean to disrespect you, sir, but you're being a bit of a cockatoo here. For what it's worth, I agree. But cockatoos can't be stopped when they get like this. It's better to indulge him at this point. Mom, I was asking about your cockatoo. Is it still missing? I don't even have a cockatoo, and guess what? What? Even if I had, it wouldn't be missing. Alright. <laughs> just one more question. Great, got it. Right, that's just a load of nonsense, but it was pretty f <laughs> funny regardless. So I'm going to confront this guy. Whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. What I am going to do though is. I need to put on all of my best strength equipment. Because I think we might get into a fight. Do I have any other pants? Because these pants are a bit shit. Right to work! Right to work! Shame on you! I think you may be able to help me decipher some tattoos. Take out the picture. Don't think so, he grunts, barely glancing at it. Suddenly, this feels like a really, really bad idea. No, no, it feels good, baby. They were on the body of a man who was hanged here behind the cafeteria. It was on your colonel. Ooh. I want to say that. 
it was on your colonel, given the photo. Wordless, he takes the photo and looks at it. Grey eyes dart back and forth on the glossy surface, his face is unmoving. You see dead flesh, in colourful rivers of polychrome, melting skin and hair. After a while he cranes his head side to side and sighs. Fucking loincloths really did him in. Can you tell me what the tattoo means? What it means? He points to one tiny star in the web of lines, away from the man's heart, almost on his stomach. I can tell you what this one means, only one. He squints at it, it's so small. You want to hear what happened here? Yes. Our colonel is deep in the bush here. Deep in the fucking bush. In Banachal, 41, monsoon season. He's on a recon rec reconnaissance mission. He spent a month behind enemy lines scouting kip villages. Nothing but fucking bugs, snakes. Nothing but fucking bugs and snakes for fun. Men are getting restless. There's talk of switching employers. He licks his lips as if drunk suddenly. With some strange emotions, this is about to get really graphic. Last moment of backup? Don't interrupt him. Let's hear it, baby. Our buddy. He's only a captain then. Our boy. He's only a captain then, but he knows these me how these men think. If they don't see action soon, his voice gets strangely quiet. A long, long way from right to work, his gaze pierces the paper. At dawn, he comes upon two kifts, breeding in the bushes by the river. Or maybe they weren't breeding. Maybe they were just making eyes at each other. I like to think they were breeding. We shot the boy. He was useless. But the girl, she was nice. A little fat, you know, but not too old. Say nothing. She was quite the entertainment for the week she lasted, expired in the hands of Sarge Mason, the kind of guy who'd make chief there. He nods towards the man at the gates, shit his pants and cry like a bitch. God, he suddenly burst out laughing. Mason couldn't let go. Cut the tits off her cold body of fucking and fucking ate them. Said primitive spirits were watching over him now. Suddenly the laughter stops, drowned in a creak a week later. Spirits my ass. Something stirs in your stomach. There's a word on the tip of your tongue, colourless, odourless, it's... Evil. You bet it was. What is evil? It's just nature. This guy, he points at the pictures. He used to say evil is when nature and spirit meet in the wrong place. You were there? No. I was in the domain, in Jamrock, being a bouncer. You're not really a scab leader, are you? Fucking mask is getting sweaty. I want to take my mask off, but he shrugs. He's under orders, and orders are orders. Give me it back. Nice. Go ahead. He turns towards the gate slowly and yells, All right now, free commerce. Are you a mercenary hired by wild, hired by wild pines? Free flow of... Co he's, he's ignoring me. Don't talk to him any longer. Just leave, please. Nah, I'm gonna push this. Is there a tribunal being convened by any chance? Fucking bug. He breathes out slowly, his giant chest deflating and his mouth slightly open. How about you fuck off now? Hmm. <laughs> okay, of course. The lieutenant says his voice says his voice is soothing and calm. He looks at you. There could be weapons aiming at us right now, somewhere above in the buildings. The other merc, don't push this. He's thinking. This is not the time. I haven't got a choice. Okay. The man's breathing steadies but his eyes are still narrow. Slowly he's trying to get his right to work dance back on. It's hard to do that when you want to beat a man to a pulp instead. I'm gonna leave. I got your number son. Right back to Everett. What's really bugging me is how to get into that apartment block. It's really getting on me tits. If it was me, I'd just climb up the fucking wall, Spider-Man style. In fact, I would I just barge the door down. Why can we not just force the door open?
go over there. I like how we can just click there now and he'll auto auto walk in that direction. I can't really see anything else to do here. I know I could speak to him but I wonder if this guy knows that we went in the, into the apartment. He probably will. He's got eyes everywhere, hasn't he? Right, come on then, you cocksucker. Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. You don't have to sit down this time, since you're already sat on that chair. Open the door, you ask me. Can we discuss the murder now? I'm very glad to hear that, Harry. He says with a smile. One question. You didn't actually happen to stumble in and see what's inside the apartment, did you? There is no way to sway this man in any direction. He's unsuggestible and unswayable. Just tell the truth. You think? I did go inside. Nah, the deal wasn't for me to go inside, so I didn't. You're right, Harry. You only had to unlock the door. He gives you a clever look, which you did, so we're all good here. Now let's get down to brass tacks. It's time for men like me and you to figure out who's killed who and why. He pretends to roll up his sleeves. Real police work is going to start happening now, I promise you, Harry. This is going to be good. There was a collection of colonial mugs there, and I found a similar mug and... So I can tell him about it if I want to do, but I'm not going to. I've heard about a connection between the lynching and the strike. By now I'm sure you've figured out who the dead man was working for. The bad guys. Wild Pines, sent to scare us. Another violent measure. Off the top hats against us flat caps. I'm listening. Harry, this strike is the culmination of many, many mistakes made by the Wild Pines group. They tried to shut my strike down by sending in armed mercenaries. You mean our victim? He nods gravely. A security contractor, can you imagine that? Workers standing in peaceful protest. United in the spirit of fellowship. And they send hired killers to most down with machine gun fire. I'm talking beasts. Hardened killers from the proxy wars in Yisut. Killing little children for the Senorita Pineapple Company, Harry. Everything they did here, they brought over here. They want to turn River Shoal into a third world slum. Honestly, the only thing they didn't do is kill the village elephant. Go on. Now I haven't personally witnessed the brutalities out there. I had the luxury of staying in my container. You see, if I need to go somewhere, they just move my container, he laughs. Go on. But my fun container, he chuckles. It's a hoot, Harry. Who knows? Maybe you'll be in here next time they move it. It'll be very fun, I promise. But enough about me and my container. His face turns serious. The killers the company hired, I think there were three of them, all hardened commando types. One of them got downright suicidal, getting drunk, violent, a little rapey. He shakes his head. Even their own negotiator couldn't control him. That's your boy, the one who likes hanging out in trees. By negotiator, I mean Joyce. Harry, he says, ignoring the lieutenant. What you need to realise is, we dock workers are not pushovers. We got grit, Harry. This whole neighbourhood does. Push us hard enough and we push back. And when we do, he raises his finger. We push to kill. Who exactly did the pushing? There's a militant wing inside the Union, a group of people whose duties don't involve manual labour, but peacekeeping in the neighbourhood, making sure everything runs sp smoothly. They're like you guys, he nods. Idealistic people who want to make sure bad things don't happen, and if they already have, well, punishment must follow. So these idealists killed our victim. One day, Titus Hardy, leader of his peacekeeping faction, comes up to me and says, Boss, socialist democratic fervour, drove us to take it upon ourselves to kill the beast that was burdening the land. He probably worded it differently, but that was the idea. Sure sounded to me like they killed him, he chuckles. I gave them two weeks paid leave and told them to lay low to avoid re retaliation. Oh, we've just got a new breakthrough. Aren't you worried we, we might arrest them for this? Oh, I'm not at all worried about that. They're not the kinds of men who get arrested. They're Martinez boys, tough and gritty. 
I like to see the men who take them in, he chuckles. Besides, I sent my lawyer girl to look after them. If he's just boasting, then it sure doesn't feel like that to you. He's not worried. There was a collection of Colonel mugs there and I found a similar mug in the trash with the hanged man's clothes. I'm gonna do that. Fuck it, I'm gonna do it. Racist mugs in the trash and in the apartment, he grabs his head with both hands. You guys are just light years ahead of me. I have so much confidence in the ability of your organisation, I'm relieved you're doing this and leaving me to do what I do best, helping people with the power of politics. Yes, yes, do you think this weasel is somehow connected to the murder? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't cross paths like that, he shakes his head laughing. All I want is for you to succeed in your investigation. I would never complicate things for you. But the weasel might have cleaned up after the killers. Believe me, Harry, he's a nobody. Just your basement variety nobody. Can't imagine him being connected to a high caliber case like this. But he does live nearby. Maybe it's a pedantic weasel. Fascists are known to be neat freaks. I feel like a real detective right now, Harry. Am I getting this right? He imi imitates bashing something with an imaginary baton. That's not how you button someone. The technique is way off. You strike with your whole body, not the button. No, you have to put your weight behind it if you want to do real damage. Oh, Harry, he bust out laughing. Thanks for the tip. I'll leave doing the real damage to you. You're the real police officer. That's all he's going to say on the subject. How do you know the mercenaries were hired by the shipping company? He slams his fist on the desk. That's their MO. Last winter some poor workers in Terminal E went on a little strike. Two seconds. My throat's dry as fuck, son. The company sent in sediment. A security contractor. The strike was over the workers' rights to wear protective footwear, Harry. These guys turn up and start beating people. Tell you what, Harry. I wouldn't be surprised if we got the same mercenary company after a little rebranding. And I'm sure as hell not surprised to see any army of scabs under my gates. So you believe the scabs were organised by the security contractor? You said it. The first slams on the desk again. His fist slams on the desk again. One of those guys looks big enough to take down that proverbial elephant. Boys like that don't just happen to show up during strikes. The name of the company is Crennel this time. It might have been sediment before. Of course, you're always one step ahead of me, Harry. I'm no genius. I'm in this position because people like me. The remaining mercenaries are organising a, tri a tribunal to take on the Hardys tribunal. He appears aghast. That sounds serious, Harry. We union men should be shitting ourselves. He rubs his chin and smiles suddenly. I wish you hadn't told me that. I'm going to lose sleep over this. Let's change the subject. He's clearly happy about the tribunal. You don't seem too worried about it. Oh, Harry. What do I really think about the tribunal? You're trying to climb a second base with old Everett before you've even courted him properly. A lawyer girl. Liz is a bright one. He grins broadly. I paid for that law degree myself, thinking it's probably... So that's the girl the guy outside was talking about, where Everett sent her off to lawyer school. I paid for that law degree myself, thinking it'll probably turn her in all fancy with hell, Harry. She came back a firebrand socialist. Sometimes she scares me. Tell me about Hardy and his crew. A simply fine young men, all seven of them, exemplary union members, always working to advance their position in the local socialist dem democratic movement core members. Old Theo used to run them, but things really kicked into gear when Titus took the reins and named the group after himself. He started laughing. Gotta love his initiative. Who's in second command? Almost all of them. The born leaders. Work with them, hell, interview them, but don't fight them. They're really just like you, men who like beer. Where can I find them? I know where they are. He points both index fingers at you. I got a feeling they're gonna show up in full force tomorrow. Also, oh, that's not them in the in the rags place. In the future, I could use your backing. Can you ask the Hardy boys to walk co to cooperate? But of course, it's the least I could do for my good friend Harry. I'll do it right after we concluded this talk. When you meet this Titus, tell him about this. See what he has to say. Also, Harry, he has five real. He holds out a banknote. Fuck, I want to take it. The lieutenant watches you, pocket the banknote. He looks a little puzzled. How many micro bribes would this guy take? I'll take as many as I get, can get. Good boy. Good talk, let's conclude for now. Was it a good talk? He leans back, suddenly worried. I'm not sure we made much headway here. I was hoping we'd bust the case wide open. Heck, I even wanted to tell you what I really want to achieve with the strike. 
I don't know what happened, Harry. I wanted you to feel like Mr. Martin is, and of course, I also wanted you to find your gun. Great sadness comes over him, but it's like I can't completely trust you yet. Yet? Yes, Harry, it's like I can't fully trust you if you're not a man of the left, he says, slowly shaking his head. I want to, but I just can't. He's been hurt too much in the past by men who aren't social democrats. What's that supposed to mean? This is another corrupt scheme, isn't it? I'm neither left nor right. I do what my heart tells me to. I'm not a man of the left. I'm a patriot of Revachol. You're right not to trust me. I take care of me. I'm a hustler. I grind. I'm a money engineer. <laughs> perfect, Harry. That's perfect. He claps his hands. My version of the left is not against the companies. It's with the companies, honestly. What I have in mind is a business proposal. A left-wing business proposal, but still. And what would this entail? I require nothing unethical or illegal of you. You just need to get two little signatures on this piece of paper. He pulls out an envelope and they'll mail it to my accountant in La Delta. What are the signatures for? The union is going to build a modern youth centre in Martinez, he grins broadly. It will be righteous. We're going to keep those teenagers off drugs and on roller skates. Roller skating, not drugs, Harry. You like this. There's a nameless little street on the coast with some old houses around it. Most people have already signed. I just need two more signatures to get this mission off the ground. Where is this place? Across the canal. A cul-de-sac. Little village. Water drips from the eaves. A woman looks at her freshly tarred skiff. There's a pair of calvary, calvary boots under the fish in the box in the wind howls like vicious spirit. What will happen to the current occupants? They're just going to have to deal with the construction noise for six months and then they'll be living like kings right next to a fancy new youth centre. Fine, if I happen to be there, I can ask them. You're bringing joy to my heart, Harry. Such a pleasure to be working with you. Here, he hands you an open white envelope. You need to get signatures from Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. The cul-de-sac is right past the pawn shop across the canal. I hear there's some trouble with the water lock, but they should fix that by Wednesday morning. Okay then. Once you have the signatures, mail this to La Roca in La Delta. Then I know we can do business together. He runs his fingers through his thin hair. I'm told the union is involved in the local drug trade. What? He smacks his forehead completely flabbergasted. Harry, how could you say that to me? You know I appreciate a joke as much as any jolly fat guy, but I can't take slander. Are you actually investigating this? No, I'm not. The man rubs his temples and closes his eyes in pain. You've hurt me, Harry. Me, a friend. But you know what? He perks up and gets over it in two seconds. Seems like it didn't really hurt him. I trust you like I trust all my friends. I know you'll never take me. Talk to me about this again because you don't want to wound me. <laughs> okay. Thank you for understanding. The lieutenant looks at him in the eye. We will continue to do what we must. You too, lieutenant. Fuck him. I've just finished investigating the local drug trade. Ah yes, your side investigation, thank you. He adjusts his glasses. You've got some spirit clear enough phony drug accusations inside it, alongside this murder. I'll talk to the mayor and see if I can get you the key to the city. Not even a speck of anger in his voice. Can we get over a few details concerning this murder? I met Joyce, the company representative. That's very nice, I haven't gotten around to her yet. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry is that it's not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone's just pals here. We're all trying to do what's best for Martin Hayes. His smile widens. Don't feel like you can cooperate with her because you and I are such good friends and I'm helping you find your lost gun. I'm not a jealous guy. <laughs> That's so nice of him. Suspiciously nice. What happened to the previous negotiator? What do you mean, Harry? The big man sounds annoyed. Nothing. I let him go. He made concessions for the company in previous negotiations. Why would you let an ally let that go? He's an old man, Harry. I wanted to spend more time with his family. He wanted to spend... No, I wanted him to spend more time with his family. He looks down and sighs. God knows how long he's got left. You called him a midget. Harry, he explains, indignant. I have little people in my organisation. I would never call someone a midget. What's this? Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. Abruptly, he smiles and changes his tone. I'm only kidding. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. 
It's hard to say if he really lost his temper or if this is another one of his tricks. This man almost never angers visibly. Are you sure? I find it a little odd. I'm just a nice guy. I wouldn't be where I am now if I wasn't nice. Politics is all about emotions and I want you to have positive emotions when you think of me. <laughs> okay then, positive emotions it is. You like positive emotions. Why haven't you let her in to see you? If she actually wants to see me, she'll find a way. Any good negotiator would. I just don't have anything to discuss with the bad negotiator. He doesn't want to see her, simple as that. Okay. Joyce said previous union leader vanished under suspicious circumstances. Vanished, Harry. The woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here in time for the voting. Did I have my casserole on? Better go home and check. The election can wait. The man frowns disapprovingly. When she got back, the whole thing was over. The union's lowballing her. Yes, yes, lowballing, of course. He's suddenly very serious. This isn't a casino, Harry. Real people, real livelihoods are at stake here. But everything's a casino for those rich types. Right, that's it. I've no interest in what she's doing. Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. He looks around. Tell her how overweight I am. This is weird. Not nice weird, but okay. What's in the container outside the office? Literally millions of containers. There's something special about it. It was attached to the Gvalson crane. With sm you smooth talking son of a bitch, he says with the fondant of smiles. Time's a precious resource and I don't have enough of it to count containers with you. Smooth talking. Maybe that's the way to go about opening the container. You should at least try convincing it. Okay. Right, that's it. Done. Now, what's this? The precarious world. So this is a thought I've mastered. How to not lose? It's impossible not to. The world is balanced on the edge of a knife. It's a game of frayed nerves. You're pushed by numbers and punitive measures, pain, rejection and unpaid bills. You can either play or you can crawl under a boat and waste away. Turn into salt or a flock of seagulls. Your enemies would love that. Or you can fight. The only way to load the dice is to keep on fighting. Critical success and failure thresholds lowered by one. Okay. And another one. The 15th Indo tribe. Because there was the 15th Indo tribe was comprised of eight kids from Farnborough in North Jamrock, running from wild dogs into the valley, hiding scents under their rocks and stealing clothes off clotheslines, and sometimes even the copper wiring of phone lines. You may have been one of them. This must be a childhood memory. The 15th Indo tribe was your Indo tribe, set to rule Insuland. The rest of the kids are dead now. Car accidents and drug overdoses, only you remain. Plus 10 cents for every green orb clicked. Learning cap for saviour fate increased to 6. Okay then, and we're still trying to level this up. Hey there, pretty good, good them. So where does it tell you what they do? Bonuses from thought. Learning for perception to five. Plus one empathy. I don't know what this does yet. Plus 10 cents for every green orb clicked. Hey, we'll make money easily now. Right then. I don't particularly like this guy at all. I really don't. I think he's a smarmy little cunt. But some of the things he says is, is right. I need to get into this container outside, I've got no idea how to do it. Well, not only that. I need to go around a back way to try and get into that building, the apartment block. Persuade the door to open.
Fuck this, tell you what I'm, get I'm getting in there. Rhetoric. I've got nothing with rhetoric on it. Minus one rhetoric, take that off. Fuck this, let me get I'm gonna get in here. It's pissing us off. Three percent chance. Maybe this is the proper chucks check so we're never ever gonna get into here with three percent. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna fucking get. I'm gonna see if it's coming the shit out of this. I might put some skill points into it to see how much the percentage goes up. My rhetoric's on none, how can it be on none? Bonus from items, minus one. Oh that's right, I need to take my hat off. Right, take that off. Three percent. Oh, and that's at max because I can only put one point in these. I just simply can't get through that door, no matter what I do. Fuck! And I got through it. Oh my god! I got through it. I got through it by accident. I spent a skill point though, but fuck it. Despite the dirt that surrounds and trails you. A beacon of light emerges from deep within you. Hello, is there anybody there? The door stands silent. Satisfied detective? A wry smile crosses the lieutenant's face. If there's someone there, I'd like to talk to you. Just like that, you hear a click, then a rattle. Some mechanism unlocks itself inside the door. Mega rich light bending guy. From deep within the container, a voice. Ahoy! Come on in. The smile disappears. You can't be serious. <laughs> I did it! Did it? Fuck it, that was well worth spending a skill point on. Whoa, what the fuck am I looking at? The man stands at the far end of the shipping container. It's hard to say anything more about him. You cannot make out the guy make out any of his details, but you do feel the overwhelming presence of capital. The feeling causes all the hairs on your body to stand at attention, like soldiers preparing for review. Squint. Something's amiss. The light beams bend around his face and scatter in a thousand directions. It seems the laws of physics do not apply here. They are suspended, distorted, and echo. Trying to visualize the physics that players light built to give you an aneurysm. Don't think about it too hard. In the general stillness, only your tongue moves, flickering as you utter. Hello. Welcome, come in. Make yourself at home. Sorry I'm not better able to receive you. I wasn't expecting visitors today. You can't hear him exactly, yet you're able to understand every word he says. It's very strange. An overwhelming hum cover covers everything. Voice doesn't escape from him. Now he claps his hands together. What can I do for you gentlemen? What you can see of his body appears composed in a sharp summer suit and yachu, yacht shoes. Who are you? Oh, I haven't been asked that question for such a long time. There's a genuine surprise in his voice. I don't meet a lot of people outside my circle these days. Huh. Anyhow, my name is... Rustami Diodor. Investor, license holder, an extremely high net worth individual. And you are? Mr. Diodor, I'm Lieutenant Kim Katsurugi with the RCM. This is my partner. My name is Harry, I'm a detective. Pleasure to meet you, Harry, he says warmly. 
Public service is a noble cause. How did you become so rich? What are you doing in this container? What are you doing here? Travelling, this is a great way to get around. It's fun, safe, and it gives me lots of time to think. By the way, let me ask you a question. Where are we exactly? We're in Martinez. I want, I want to say this. A district of Revachol, the former capital of the world. Ah, Revachol. I remember walking its streets as a teenager. There used to be a bowling alley in Stel Maris. I wonder if it's still there. It's a shame I can't get out and explore myself. One of the downsides of being an extremely high net worth individual is that mobs of low net worth individuals are constantly banded together to ask for money. <laughs> I was going to ask for money. Wait, why don't you help them? You've got so much money, it can't make a difference to you. So you travel from place to place via shipping container. Smart, no. It also provides a means to hide from all the targeted advertising we extremely high net worth individuals are constantly subjected to. Luxury yachts, high fidelity portable radio systems, pale proof outerwear and so on. It just gets a bit middle class after a while, a bit bourgeois. Ah, so you're saying being rich isn't worth the hassle? Yeah, that does sound pretty tiresome. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, they're nice things, but once you achieve a certain level of wealth, your time and mental space becomes much more important than material goods. He speaks from the heart. He has very different problems compared to low net worth individuals such as yourself. For example, no problems at all. So you're saying being rich isn't worth the hassle? What? No, I didn't say that at all. Being rich is great. Just don't tell anyone I told you that. The Ben in life appears to wink. How did you become so rich? Oh lord, not this again. Ignore him. We have a murder to solve. I don't care. And yet it never seems to get us any closer to solving the case. The man chuckles. It's quite right. I'm used to the question by now. To be blunt, I inherited my fortune from my grandmother, who herself was an extremely high net worth individual back in grad. All I did was take her fortune and invest it prudently. Believe it or not, it takes more than a bit of skill to blow a vast fortune on sale and boats and bad choices, unsupervised, state policy. And blow. So, what's it like? The man exhales a whistle. I gotta tell you, at first being rich is a lot of work. You've got to work hard because everything is so darn expensive, you know. Prices increase exponentially at this income level. But then, once you've reached my position, it's nearly impossible for me not to make money. My assets are so diversified that I'm bound to come out of head no matter what. Some of my lowest, lower net worth friends say to me, but doesn't that take all of the fun out of it? And I tell them, not really. You're right. Capital accumulation is its own reward. Yeah, I agree. Precisely, Harry, you know. I hear people talk sometimes about econ economic equality and fairness and all that kind of stuff, but tell me, where would we be without liberalism? In caves, whacking each other out with bones. That would suck. A nightmare scenario. A world of slavery and violence, which brings us back to the essential truth of modernism. Where we are right now, the freedom of mankind can only be derived from the free flow of capital. Man, being a high net worth individual sounds great. <laughs> it is, truly. It's almost entirely carefree, he nods. It really leaves you time to better yourself spiritually. Hey, hey, all this talk about money has made you lose the thread. What's going on with the light in this place? That's what you need to talk about. You're a rich investor, right? Can I have some money? <laughs> Just asked it. Could you please stop asking people for money? But Kim, I also can't afford to look any better than I do now. That's why I need the money. It's perfectly all right. Based on your appearance, I can tell I'm dealing with a smart man. As you may know, us net high worth individuals do not have a lot of cash on hand. Investments and liquidity are enemies of one another. Oh, three, there we go. Bargain. Thank you for your kindness. You're welcome, you know. His eyes narrow. The light seems to bend more aggressively. Maybe you can make that money grow. Come up with an investment plan. How's that sound? Oh. Conceptualization. Present a sound investment plan. Present an investment plan that is sure to fail. Huh. Right. There's something strange about you. I'll come back to these later. What do you mean his essence seems to signify actual surprise? Well, I don't know how to put it. You look somehow a little different. Are you talking about my chin? No, no, no. I can't even see you. It's as if something's happening to the light. Ah, oh, that's what you mean. Yes, I've heard of this effect. 
though I've never witnessed it myself, of course. It has something to do with our Weiss Wiseman coefficient, or what? It's some statistical thing, in essence. It says that when an extremely low net worth individual meets an extremely high net worth individual, some of the laws of physics cease to apply. Are you telling me that you're so rich that light literally bends around your face? Among other things, but calm down. I'm but a lowly single digit billionaire. Really? No, not really. There are actually quite many digits. A man that's... A man this chill is at least a triple digit billionaire. Kim, are you seeing this weird stuff? I see nothing of the sort. To be frank, all I see is a gentleman who's unusually well dressed for martinez in a cargo container which I admit is odd. Okay. We should get back to our investigation. Thanks for your time. End. Right, I want to find out where this goes. Let's put my conceptualization clothes on. I think that's it. Anything that negatively affects conceptualization. Nope. Right, I'll give it a shot. Is there anything else in this room? Nothing. Sometimes it's awkward to click on things. Still 3%. I want to try this. I want to present an investment plan that's sure to fail because I'm obviously going to fail this. Maybe it'll backfire and I'll present a good one because I'm actually failing at failing. <laughs> Success! Success! What's worse than throwing money at something that's already failed? Okay, so I've got this idea for a board game. <laughs> Go on, brace yourself. It's very high concept. I'm ready. It's a pen and paper game where people all over the world can play with each other using radios. Oh, shit, we've already... Yes, that's right! Nicking an idea that wasn't worth anything in the first place and trying to pass it off as your own. How very entrepreneurial. I love it. That's because I'm a legend, mate. Hold on. Have we met before? I don't think so. Yeah, on second thought, it couldn't have been you. Your idea reminds me of a group of young men who came to me a long time ago calling themselves Fortress Accident. The name should have been a red flag. They pitched me and hand a handful of other investors for an idea for a role-playing game that would, in their words, change the world. What happened? Well, at first everything was rosy, the ideas were solid, but they were lacking in, how do I put it? They lacked the will to get things done. As the financial situation became more desperate, the ideas devolved from realistic to absolute insanity. We lost all of our money. High art types never deliver. They're only good for peddling Welkins or whatever creeps they come up with. That's right, because they drew a load of Welkins, didn't they? I guess the inordinate amount of time they poured into drawing mythical creatures did not generate a return on investment. Wait, where are they now? Nobody knows for sure, but the place can't be pretty. Did you try to salvage the project somehow? Sadly, when we got there it was too late. The concept had run out of steam, only dust remained. What I want to tell you is this. It's a very bad idea, dead in the water. You seem like a reasonable man, but it's not a reasonable plan. Okay, well, maybe I was wrong. We've all learned something t today. Are you sure you don't want to give those little welcomes a second go? Thought acquired bankruptcy science. <laughs> Absolutely not. Damage morale. Stop embarrassing yourself, pop a magnesium and calm down. <laughs> right. Oh, fuck it, I'll take that. Uh, I'm not actually going to pop a magnesium because I don't think I need it. But what is this thing that we got? I can't even find out because I... Business loves silence. The second loudest sound on the world. Five hours, fifty minutes to complete. Right, so what does it say here? Is the company going to go down and leave you in the gutter with the rest of the dredges? Delivering parcels for soup money. You need to crisis manage your way out of this. One, two, three, four, five. I've got five skill points. I'll unlock that. And I'll start doing the bankruptcy sequence. There we go. Right, we'll start learning that. Happy days. 
Well, that was a nice little little side thing. To be honest, we're getting so sidetracked. This fucking crime is just... Who cares about the crime anymore? I'm dealing with ridiculous, life-bending multi-billionaires. Now, nowadays, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I remember coming here to try and find my way around. What I actually thought this was, was if I could have opened this door, I could have walked across a ledge to get to a different part of this, this district. Can I not go down these stairs? See, yeah, this is it. Look where we are. This is the balcony of where we spoke to that smoking guy. Ah, what's this? Can I get down there? Fuck. Wait there, maybe. We just have a look. No, there's no way under that roof. I just don't know, lads. I really haven't got a clue. I'm gonna look at my um, my quest menu. Right. So Tuesday. That's t so Monday is gone. Also, these were just quests we got on Monday. There are strange doors in the ruins. Nobody knows where they are, right? I don't know how to get that. Find Morel. Asian cryptozoologist has been out on the reeds for too long. That's right. That's in a different area. Close the water lock on Wednesday. The smoke on the balcony. Find a way inside the larger apartment building in the north. That, well, that, that's the only thing we can really do. The rest of this is... Split a kilo with Kuna. We can do that. But we've got to get away to the fucking apartments. The apartments is what's really slowing me down here and I just can't find a way. I don't know the way. Hmm. Let me think. And how do I get on that roof as well? Actually, there's something I did want to do. Can you remember at the start of the game that we could we had a choice to steal something? I want to see if I can steal it. I think it was a it was a map or a leaflet or something. But I want to see if I've got the right skill to do it now. Where's she gone? Oh, she's still there. Here. Interfacing. Yeah, my interfacing's dog shit like. Oh, wait there, wait there, wait there. Look, I get money from every one of these now, don't I? Bling bling! 
every time I click on it's a shame I've already clicked on loads so many green things because I could have had so much money. But what's a player to do, homie? What time is it? One o'clock. We've got plenty of time to investigate the guys in the apartment. I'm not missing anything there. Can this wench let me in the bloody door? Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Can't even ask her. This is 100% bullshit, this, like. I've checked the backyard but couldn't get in that way. Look. We've had enough problems with bums and drunks and thieves loitering in the hallway. You have no business here. Right, well, I'll tell you what. What can save this? Now that it's... Whatever we've done, we've done something somewhere. And it's enabled her to give us that sp speech option. Save it, because if this fails, I'm fucking... I don't know how to get in the building. Let's in, bitch. Bang, bang. You're well versed in this kind of threatening leak. Legalese that implies criminal liability, but in fact has no meaning whatsoever. Mom, your non compliance is hindering a police matter. I may be forced to refer for potential prosecutions. I know my rights, and don't you mom me, boy. <laughs> Miss, would it help if we offer to show you our badges? Hold your horses. You hear the click of the night lash before the lady on the other side gets caught in a coffin spasm. I don't care about your stinking badge. Just come in. Good, because I want to rescue you, you fucking old hag. Nice, we're in, we're in, we're in, we're in. We are in the building. There's so much to do now. There's so much that's opened up. One, not only that. I'm going to wait till tonight to go in this building if I can find apartment. 12A of Kuno's dad. I want to do that bit by myself. I'm not going to do it with the um, Kim around. Bad idea. A firing squad for the rich. Apartment 8. A note reads, foreclosed by Martinez Real Realty Associates. The sea blows below looks cold and wintry, winter grey. Shivers, a shift in temperature, the air chills around you, dust settles on the stony floor. Rub your sides for warmth. A former architect stands before a slice of window, a room plan in her hand. A cold wave has made the air in the building stand still and frozen, with temperatures falling down to 20, minus 20 degrees C. Her face is red from the cold. She's breathing on her fingers, clasping the plan. Traces of sadness are visible in her expression. The plan. Faint pencil lines on paper depict the same place, but a missing eastern wall connects to the room with neighbouring apartment. Ideas for arranging the furniture have been jotted down. Look around yourself. It's clean and empty with new tapestry embellishing the walls. A standard HB graphite pencil has fallen off a three-legged stool in the middle of the room. Finished thought. Someone has torn down the wall. Well, let's go through then. Oh, I found a fridge. An old grocery list. What, so we can't open the door from... from the inside. 
No. What about this one? Was that... Is that where we came in? No, look, wait, right. Wait upstairs here. Well, give me whatever's in here. And there. Above top, slap in the wind, forgotten hammers and nails rust. I want to explore this bottom floor first. Now, I've actually forgotten why we are here. Smoker on the balcony. I'll have to talk to her about the, the apartment number. Give me a moment. The elderly woman is leaning on her broom. The never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> this woman's health is failing her. There's not much to do, not in this dump. Oh, I didn't care about her health, to be honest. This won't take long, I only have a few questions. Go ahead, then. What do you want to know, policeman? I'm looking for the parents of a kid called... Well, first off, yeah, kid called Kuno. Dear Reuters, are at the end of this hallway, right next to the communal bathroom. I'm looking for Martin Martinez. Cleaner lady smiles a gap tooth smile. When she hears you mention the name. Oh, you'll find plenty of Martins here, don't you worry. Looking for a real person named Martin Martinez. He told me he's Martin Martinez. But I, I knew that was a fake name to start with, like. What do you mean I wasn't joking? P. Brain, someone played a trick on you. Martin Martinez is the name of anyone from Martinez. Like Jim Jamrock or Raoul Ravishol. Oops, you really didn't get the joke there. Well, I did. Just my character didn't. I thought it was obvious he stops before he offends you. Anyways, officer, we don't have the witness's name. How about a young male in his mid-twenties, dark hair, skinny build, a smoker on the balcony? Know where he lives? Yes, yes, I know who you mean. The scorny boy who's always smoking like the devil, right? She looks at the other end of the hallway. Somewhere in the building, a child, a child starts crying. You hear a radio turn to a talk show and someone taking a shower. What's he in trouble for? No trouble, I just want to talk to him. Do you know where he lives? Talk. The cleaner lady starts laughing. But it turns into a violent coffin spasm. She squeezes her broom trying to catch her breath. He lives upstairs in room number 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. She points east. He's usually home in the evening. Thank you. He turns to you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony if we see his home. I'm going to go there without his permission. I have a few questions about these apartments. Who lived in the foreclosed apartment? She doesn't know. Why is there a hole in the wall in the abandoned apartment? Some lunatic lost his mind. With how small these rooms are, wouldn't you want to break the wall down? Is one of the residents on vacation their mailbox is overflown? People come and go. What can you tell me about Cindy? The artist? She scoffs. Nothing I can do about her, I'm afraid. She runs the walls faster than I can clean them. She leans on her broom. She leaves an old lady to her business more than I can say for others. Right, that's it. And who are you? I'm no one, just an old woman. Do you live here? If you call it living, she spits on the floor. Before wiping it off with the broom, I have a little room upstairs, right next to the cold room. It's barely bigger than a closet, but I don't complain. And all she gets too, the coastal wind beats down hard on the cold room door outside. Splashes of waves make the bal balcony slippery. Right, I'm off. Right, well, tell you what. We'll call it an episode here. When we get back... I'm going to investigate the skinny boy's room, the smoker outside's room upstairs. I'm also going to investigate this whole area. And by the looks of it, down this corridor is Kuno's dad's room, which is where I'm going to come back tonight and give him a good old hiding and steal the drugs solo. <laughs> I am a brutal cop. See you in the next one, lads.